In this video, I'm going to show you how to get week numbers for each month and at the same time exclude weekends. So for example, your week numbers for 2017 will not look like this one, but they will start from one the moment you get to a new month. There are different approaches to this depending on how you want to handle the cutoff week. So for example, do you consider the last days in January and the first days in February to all be week five? Or do you always want to start with week one the moment you get to the first of the month? But regardless of how you want to do it, I'll show you both ways. This is the sample data set that we have. I have the dates starting from 2017 till beginning of 2018. I'm going to show you the two versions. First of all, it's going to be the week number version and second, the week day version. Now, what I ultimately want to do is not to show any week numbers when we come across a Saturday and a Sunday. So that's why I put the weekday here. So this cell here in B, that's just my serial numbers. These are my dates. And here, as you can see, the cell value equals this one, but the custom formatting of it is showing the week name. So if I press Control-1 or right mouse click, go to Format Cells, you can see the custom formatting that's associated to that. If I take it away, I can see the serial number of the date. So dates are basically just pure numbers in Excel. If I format this date to YYYY, for example, it's going to show the year associated to that serial number. If I put MM and another two M's, I see the month name associated with it. And for these, I get the week day name associated with it. And I only did that so we can test our formula. So when we come across Saturday and Sunday, we don't see any week numbers there. So what's the difference between these two? That's the difference. And that's when we come to the end of the month. In the first case, it stops and resets itself back to one when we get to the first of the next month. In the second case, it keeps the same value and it resets once we switch the week again and we start off on a Monday. With the first version, you can have a full week that's just one day because your week one could just be one day or your week five could just be one day, like in this case. Okay, whereas with the second method, the full week here is week four, even though we arrive to the first of the next month and then we start from one again. Okay, so depending on which version works for your report, you can go with that version. So let's start here in the draft sheet. I'm gonna use the week number formula. That's a very, very simple formula. All I need is that serial number, which is my date. I also have the option here to define how my week starts, Sunday, Monday, or so on. And that's when I can use these values here. But by default, it's a Sunday. So I'm just going to go with that and see what we get. Let's push the formula all the way down. These are the week numbers that are associated to that date. And obviously they're just going to go all the way up. If I go down here to week 53 in this case, and then it's going to reset back to one. Okay. So what I want to do is to make them reset the moment I come to the first of the next month. Okay. So right here, that's the first of the month. I want these to be ones and I want these to be twos. Okay, so if we think about it, if I find the current week number like I do right now, and I say minus the week number that's associated to the first of each month, that could help me. Because that would be, if I'm right here, that would be six minus five. That would give me a one, right? If I'm here, that would be five minus five. That would be zero. So all I need is to add a one to the result of this, and then I get one, two, and so on. 
right? So let's see if it works. Let's just write it right here. So I take the current week number and I say minus now week number of the first of the month. And I need a serial number, so I need a date. But because I need the first of the month, and this in this case is the first of the month, but here I want to say minus 1 1 2017. 1 1 2017. So all of these need to be the first of the month. I need to create that serial number using the date function because that's what date is going to return. It's going to return a serial number to the week number formula. So now the date serial number needs three things. It needs the year, the month, and the day. Well, I can use the year formula to strip out the year from this date because year just needs the date, right? So that gives me 2017. Now the month, I can also use the month formula and strip out the month here. Now for the day, I'm going to fix it, right? I'm going to fix it to one. This is going to return the serial number that the week number formula needs. And then it's going to figure out which week number is associated to the first of that month. So I'm going to close brackets again and press enter. Let's see what we get. We get the zeros, the one, two, and so on. So if I just add a plus one here, Let's see if it resets. Here is a five and here is a one again. And then it's a two, three, four, five, and then a one here again. So that looks good. Now, all I have to do is not to show anything when I come across a Saturday, Sunday. So I need to figure out, am I at a Saturday, Sunday or not? And a good formula to help me with that is the weekday function. Okay, and because I'm checking like am I, did I arrive at a Saturday, Sunday, I can use the if function here. And in the if function, I'm going to check the weekday. Weekday requires a serial number, which is this one, it's my date. Weekday returns a number. It's going to return, like we can see here, a number through one to seven if I go with the default but I can control the numbers I get back. So if you look at argument number two, it says Monday would be a one and Saturday would be a six and Sunday is a seven. That's going to be the result of it is going to be a number. So if I go with the second argument and say, is the weekday bigger than five? Because remember six was Saturday and seven was Sunday. So if it's bigger than five, then give me nothing back. Otherwise, do the week number formula here. So I'm going to close brackets, press enter, push this down, and let's see what we get. So that looks good. Then we go back to four, five, then we start from one again. But we could run into a problem here. So if I go all the way down to here, we can see that we have a jump from week five to week two, and we skip one. And the reason this happens is because of Saturday. If Saturday happens to be the first day of the month, we run into this problem. Why does it happen? Let me just show you the week number associated to this date, and then we can see why the formula does this. Let's pull it down to here. On Saturday, Sunday, this is our cutoff period for the week number, right? And if Saturday happens to be the first day of the month, we're going to take this 14 here and deduct 13 and add 1 to it. So we jump to 2. So to make this more robust, I'm going to add another if function and check if Saturday happens to be the first day of the month. And if that's true, I'm not going to add a 1 to this formula. Okay, so I'll make the formula correction right here. When I see that it works, I'm going to copy it to the first cell and then all the way down. Okay, so right here, I'm going to add the if. I need to check for if Saturday is the first day of the month. So the formula that I can use is the weekday function. For weekday, I need a date. 
and the date is going to be the year that's associated to this date here, then the month that's associated to this date here, and I'm going to fix the day, which is number one. So that gives me the first day of the month for this date. And now I'm going to check if this equals a Saturday. So what return type is Saturday? Well, if I go with the default, let's just take a look. It says 1 is Sunday through 7 is Saturday. So if I ignore that last argument and go with the default and say if this equals 7, it means is this equal to Saturday. And if it is, then I'm going to use that same formula. I'm just not going to add that 1 to it. So I'm going to copy this, paste it right here. And since I started in an if, what should happen if it's a Saturday? It should do this. Otherwise, it should add the one to it. And I need to add a bracket right here. Okay, so this looks good. And that looks good as well. Let me just check that if that stays five with my formula, that looks good. Okay, so I'm going to remove this and copy this revised formula to here and then push it all the way down. Okay, so let's just double check. This case is now correct. Now I know there is another Saturday that is the first. So let's just check for that as well. And that's this one. And this looks good as well. I remembered a video from Mike Gervin, Excel Magic Trick 783, where he talks about date formulas and functions. Towards the end of the video, he does a formula that always gives the date of the previous Monday. And I thought that could help us because even if we're here and we have entered the next month, the last Monday is going to be this here. So if we manage to find that last Monday and we give all of these days here the same number, that could help us with giving us the same week number for cases like this. And after that, once we have the same number for all of them, we need to figure out how we can switch them to 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5. Let's start here. I'm going to write the formula here because we have a Monday, and then we'll see how we can adjust it. So first of all, let's get the week day associated with this date here. Now from the options here, I'm going to pick this one where Monday is a zero and Sunday is a six. Okay, so that's the number three. What do we get? Well, this is a Monday, right? So we get a zero. I pull this down. That's a one, two, three, and so on. So here we are one away from a Monday. Here we are six away from a Monday. Here we're at the Monday again, and then we're one away. So that's the information that we can use to correct our days so that we can get the same number here. Well, what number do we want? Let's say in the first case, I want to see Monday's day number. So I want to see two for all of these. Here, Monday is nine. So I want to see nine for all of these. Here, Monday is 16. I want to see 16 for all of these. How do we do that? Well, I can use the day function, get the day associated to this date, and deduct this here. So in this case, what do I get? I get two, right? That's a day associated to this date, two minus zero. I get a two. And here, what would I get? I get a three minus one. It's going to be a two. Here, I would get a four minus two. I get a two. So if I pull this down, I'm going to get the same numbers. I'm going to get the Mondays for all of these dates. How do we use this information to get, instead of 16, 23, 36, 13, 27, and so on, how do we translate this to 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5? I'm sure there are many different ways of doing this. 
and please do share your versions. One way I thought of is to wrap this up in the week number formula. So yes, I say I'm using weekday here, but in fact, week number is also in here. And even in the week number formula, we're also using weekday. It's just the core driver of the formula is one or the other. So how can I do that? How can I use the week number? Well, if I use the week number of a date and use this day in the day argument, but always look at the same month and maybe the same year or we can make year variable, I should get the correct week numbers, right? Well, let's test it. I need the serial number and because I'm splitting it up, I have days separate, I need to use the date function. Date function requires year. So year, I'm going to go with this one. Then the month, I'm going to fix the month. I'm just going to put one as my dummy month here. So always look at January and the day is going to be this. Okay, so let's close brackets, go with the extra bracket. And let's check it out. Let's see what happens when we come across this. That looks good. So just to make them look similar, let's just apply the first if function so that we don't see any values for Saturdays and Sundays. So we keep that the same. If weekday of this, we go with the second argument where Saturday is a six and Sunday is a seven. If this is greater than five, then nothing otherwise do the rest. Okay, I'm just gonna pull this also one up and let's push it all the way down. That works great in this case. If you have any other versions, please do share. So these were my two versions of getting monthly week numbers that you can use in your reports. If you like this video, don't forget to leave a thumbs up. And for more of these videos, why not subscribe to my channel for updates when new videos like this one come out.